Hi everyone, in last lecture series we have seen about the working principle and working mechanism of thin layer and paper chromatography and in this lecture series we can continue the session with HPLC that is working principle of high performance liquid chromatography HPLC that is high performance liquid chromatography this is widely used analytical technique that can be used for separating various biomolecules whereas it uses liquid components that is solvents for the separation of different components as a mobile phase and it uses high pressure to push out the components and also mobile phase out of the column whereas this involves high popularity because of its high sensitivity in separating various particles and also ready adaptability to give accurate and corrective measurements out of quantitative analysis and also this is suitable for various components that is highly non-volatile and thermally sensitive components can be separated out. Coming to the principle of HPLC. So HPLC is the liquid chromatography that is used to separate different components that gets dissolved in solution. Whereas this HPLC involves a reservoir for mobile phase and a pump, an injector and a separation column and also a detector. Whereas in this we have to introduce the compound over the column by injecting through sample injection and there it gets separated and differentiates as different compounds. Through partition behavior it gets separated out and it has to be degassed before elimination to avoid various air bubbles. Coming to the instrumentation of HPLC, it involves mobile phase reservoir for transferring different solvents based on their composition and also pumping system to give high pressure to the flow of different solvents and it involves sample injection system and liquid chromatographic columns for separating difference based on their partition behavior and also detectors to give the final chromatogram. This diagrammatic representation symbolizes the HPLC system where it has two different reservoirs for solvent and it from this solvent reservoir we can give combinations of different solvents. After this it is connected as a degasser where it can avoid air bubbles and then mixing vessel and then it is connected with the high pressure pump to pump out various solvents into the pre-column where it is again connected to the sample injection port. In this sample injection port both the solvent and the sample gets mixed and it is again entered into the pressure gauge to check the various pressure ranges and also this is again connected with the analytical column where based on the partition behavior the different particles get separated out. So this is then connected with the detector where the final chromatogram of different samples can be clearly viewed. The results from the detector gives us a chromatogram. Here this chromatogram involves the T0 and TR whereas different peaks that gets derived from different time periods that is retention time period gives out different peaks of different components at different time periods whereas T0 represents the elution type of unretained peak and TR is the retention time of particles at different time period. Like this chromatogram involves the different peaks of different areas and different heights. Heights and the areas is directly proportional to the concentration of different particles. Based on the nature of separation and also the nature of different particle analysis techniques, here this liquid chromatography is of four different types. One is partition chromatography, another one is adsorption or solid liquid chromatography, next one is ion exchange chromatography and final it is size exclusion or gel chromatography. For the separation of different biomolecules, the liquid chromatography has different composition of different systems that involves solvent and solvent delivery system and also injector and sample and then column for separation and also detectors like diode arcs can be used for detectors and then waste collector and finally recorder can be used for recording different chromatograms. Coming to the HPLC chromatograph injectors, here this involves the function of injector mainly involves the separation of different samples and push into the column through high pressure at the narrow volume whereas the sample enters as a homogeneous and low volume plug. So to minimize the spreading of different volume sample during the transportation into the column the shortest possible length of tubing should be arranged for the different separation. When the injection is started with a sample an air actuator rotates the valve whereas the solvent goes directly to the column and injector needle is connected to the syringe and the air pressure lifts the needle at the vial and is moved into the position beneath the needle then the needle is lowered to the vial. Coming to the HPLC column, so this is used for highly separated and sensitive separation of different components based on their partition behavior. Whereas this is made up of stainless steel, the tubes with a diameter of 3 to 5 mm. 
and this is normally composed of the columns are filled with silica gel because it is based on the particle shape and surface properties and also the pore structure that helps to determine good nature of the different analytes. Since here we are using silica gel as a stationary phase, this is highly wetted by nearly each and every composition of the solvents and as it is highly inert it is having high surface activity with that we can separate different components based on their different polarity and also silica gel is used as separating wide variety of different chemical compounds and based on this the chromatography can be highly predictable and also reproducible so there are some of the factors that gets highly affected based on the liquid chromatography separation so we have to check prior by using this chromatogram parameters First, this involves column parameters like column material we have to choose as what desired particles we are going to get out and also deactivation. So the material that is chosen should be highly inert in nature and the stationary phase that can be bestly chosen and also coating material. And coming to the instrumentation parameters here it involves temperature and the flow and also the signal parameters and highly sensitive parameters and also finally detectors. Coming to the sample parameters that is highly checked are concentration of the sample and also matrix where the sample gets separated and also about the solvent effect and finally the sample effect should be checked thorough. So based on the different solvents what we are using and also different affinity types of different compounds to be separated here we can use different columns. So there are certain types of columns that is based on their polarity and also their affinity that involves normal phase column and also reverse phase column and size exclusion and ion exchange column. We can see in detail about different column types. Coming to normal phase column it is the type of column where the retention is governed mainly by the interaction of polar parts of stationary phase and the solute and for retention of solutes in the normal phase the packing must be more polar than the mobile phase with respect to the sample. Coming to the reverse phase column type in this column the packing material is relatively non-polar and the solvent is polar with respect to the sample whereas the retention in this reverse phase column mainly involves the interaction of non-polar components of the solutes and also non-polar stationary phase whereas this stationary phase should be highly non-polar in nature. Some of the stationary phase used are highly hydrocarbons and waxy liquids and also bounded hydrocarbons like C18 and C8 columns. Whereas the solvent should be highly polar in nature which is used as aqueous mixture of different compositions like methanol water and acetonitrile water can be used for separation. Coming to size exclusion column type, this type of column in HPLZ mainly consists of substance which have highly controlled pore size and this can be able to filter different components based on their molecular size whereas small molecules that gets retained and penetrated into different pores within the packing column and also large molecules only partially enters into the column surface and the large molecules gets eluted first than the smaller molecules. Coming to ion exchange column type, in this type of column the sample components are separated mainly based upon the attractive ionic forces between molecules that carry charged groups opposite to that of charges of stationary phase. Whereas the separation in this column is mainly made between the mobile liquid usually containing water containing salts or small amounts of alcohol and a stationary phase that contains either acidic or basic site. Coming to the different nature of samples to be separated out, it has to be detected based on different types of detectors. Whereas this involves to measure absorbance using UV with filters or sometimes UV with monochromators can be used and also IR absorbance rays can be used to measure different samples and fluorescent material can be detected using fluorescent rays and also refractive index can be used for the measurement of different compounds and sometimes evaporative light scattering detectors can be used and also electrochemical detectors and mass spectrophotometric detectors can be used and sometimes photodiode arrays can be used as a detectors. After getting chromatogram from the detectors, we have to evaluate the compounds difference between the various parameters. That includes efficiency of different compounds that get separated and also resolution and inertness and retention index and column bleed and sometimes capacity factor that determines different compound separation. Coming to the application of HPLC, it involves wide range of disciplines that includes chemical, biosciences and sometimes pharmaceuticals and clinical trials 
and also for consumer based products and environmental products separation and its purification. Whereas in chemical it involves mainly purify and separate different polystyrenes and dyes and phthalate compounds. Whereas in biomolecules the various proteins and peptides and nucleotides can be separated and purified highly. In pharma related products various antibiotics and various pharma range products can be separated. And coming to consumer products it involves lipids and antioxidant and sometimes sugars can be separated and highly purified. Coming to clinical trials various amino acids, vitamins and homocysteine products can be highly quantified and purified. And coming to environmental studies it involves polyaromatic hydrocarbons and inorganic compounds and sometimes herbicides concentration can be measured. Let us come to the end of this lecture series. In previous episodes we have seen about different types of chromatography, its principle and working mechanism and also application of different chromatographies. Let us come to the end of this lecture series. Thank you.